of one, we need to fill one vacancy for the retail. That's it. Good evening. This is the board select meeting for Tuesday, May 31st, 2016. Call the meeting to order and begin the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Red is on. Good to go. I'll start over. Uh, we have one agenda item this evening. It's for, uh, the agenda runs from 6 o'clock till 7 o'clock. We're going to look at appointing uh, temporary members to the Board of Registrars of Voters. Are they going to be temporary members or are they going to be permanent members until such time? No, the temporary member. As we reappoint again, yes. correct? Okay. The reason for all this and the reason for the uh, emergency meeting and well, it's not really an emergency meeting because we had enough time to post for this meeting, but anyway, it could have been, um, is there's been a request by one of the candidates running for the Board of Health to hold a recount. Uh, the Board of Health position, uh, the vote differential between the two candidates, as I understand, it was nine votes. And as a result of that, uh, the individual that was nine votes down would like to have a recount count just to make sure and follow a process to sort of set everyone at ease for that particular race. So in order to do that, the Board of Registrars of Voters has to oversee that process. But we have vacancies on the Board of Registrars now. So that's why we had to call this meeting to get rolling. Does that make sense? Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, is the Board of Reg I'm not familiar, and I should be, with the Board of Registrars of Voters. Is this a regular standing committee like all our other town committees that usually has a term that starts with the fiscal year or is this something that only goes through an election? No, I believe this is a standing group of individuals, a standing committee that are appointed by the Board of Selectmen on a regular basis. Um, we would appoint for a certain period of time. Um, I don't know what those terms are necessarily. I do know that because we have this recount in front of us, we've got to fill it quickly right. before we've decided. We, so we have not reappointed yet for the next fiscal year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, my, my question, Mr. Chairman, is is because there are some vacancies in the existing committee, so there are not enough members, or is it a situation where the committee, unlike most of our committees, doesn't go through the end of the fiscal year? I mean, I would think there would be a standing committee that like all the other committees, runs through, you know, at least June 30th. So if there's any problem with an election, you've already got your committee. How can someone, either Elena or someone, explain how we got into this situation? Vacancies. Vacancies. So going into the election, we didn't have an adequately full board that would normally address this under normal circumstances. Good question. Can't answer that one. 
I think Mrs. Lazarus. The Commonwealth Office can address how the vacancies occur. There's three-year terms established by statute, uh, four members. Uh, the town clerk's office can explain how we arrived at this point. Okay. All right. So uh, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Uh, but that's generally why we're here this evening. Does everybody understand why we're generally here? We'll get some more details here in a minute from Elaine and from the town clerk. But Mr. Vice Chair, hi. Sir. Um, so everybody good? Okay, so Elaine, do you want to just give us a two-minute overview from your perspective, what's going on here, and then we'll go to the town clerk. Yeah, as you explained, uh, the need for the recount has uh, prompted the board to need to appoint somebody, somebody at this point rather than waiting uh, to the normal point. And uh, uh, Connor Dagan is here to explain how this vacancy occurred and um, more about the process. Okay, great. Connor, do you want to join us at the podium and then fill us in from your perspective as our town clerk? Yes. Uh, so essentially what occurred was um, the Board of Registrars is a balanced board in town that's appointed by the Board of Selectmen. And they have equal numbers of Republicans and Democrats on them. When going into this uh, recount, uh, when contacting the registrars, one of them will be choosing to recuse themselves due to their direct involvement during the election that's in question. And another one will be uh, unable to attend the recount due to health reasons. And so because of that, even though there are not currently any vacancies on the board as of yet, uh, we do need to have at least one temporary registrar for the purpose of the recount. Uh, I have a recommendation for candidates, um, mostly based on the fact that we have an unbalanced board as of now with even with the person who is going to be out for health issues. So I wanted to recommend a Republican candidate to be able to stand on the board during the recount. Okay. So just a, a little bit of information, maybe some background information. There are 351 cities and towns in Massachusetts. There are six or seven that have partisan elections by law out of 351. We are one of them, okay? So that creates some interesting dynamics uh, for our local election process. I think it, personally, I think it's a reasonably healthy way to go things. It stirs you know, the pot a little bit, which is good. Um, but that presents us with some of the, the challenges that we're talking about tonight in terms of a balanced board. Typically, we don't have even number boards. We have a five-member board, but because this is a partisan election process in Hopkinton by law, we have to have two and two. So who are our current members today on this board? Uh, the current members are Carol Walsh, Christine Dietz, myself as town clerk, and... Um, the last name is escaping me at the moment, who's actually the one who's recusing themselves for um, illness, but uh, uh, Bousseau. I can't remember her first name at the moment. Oh, uh, Joyce. Joyce Rousseau. Yes, thank you. Joyce Rousseau is the, uh, the other member who is not going to be able to make it. So as the town clerk, are you an automatic <laughs> member of the Board of Registrars? Yes, I am. Okay. Even... And I will, I think what you're wondering is I would be counted towards the party balance, if that's what you're wondering. Yeah, so your party affiliation. What if you were an unenrolled town clerk? Uh, then it counts as being neutral, which I am an unenrolled town clerk. So I don't have a party affiliation, which means that it maintains the balance as long as there's one of each of the others. Um, we had the fortune before that there was one Democrat, one Republican, and one unenrolled along with an unenrolled town clerk. Uh, so considering the unenrolled candidate is the only one recusing themselves, it leaves the only vacancy to fill to have a quorum at the recount is the Republican seat. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for the town clerk? Mr. Tedstone. I do. Why is the person, why did that person recuse himself or herself? If they knew that there was a conflict going into the election, why were they either, why were they on the board or why did they work the election? It doesn't make sense to me. If they knew that it's a, uh, that their, their feet are in both pots, why, I don't understand why we're, why we even uh, consider them for both of those positions. 
Uh, I'll be honest with you, I would not have considered them for both of these. I, I'm kind of going with the cards I was dealt right now. Um, I'd like to recommend either way looking at the Board of Registrars, and I plan on talking to the individual to discuss with them uh, picking one or the other. Uh, but for right now, we have this situation that I don't like being in anyway, but uh, the, the best solution for the temporary uh, situation would be just to appoint one individual for now, have the other person out of it, because the issue that came up that they recused themselves, typically they wouldn't have to. But because there was a calling into question of the absentee ballots, mm -hmm. um, the, anyone who was involved with absentee ballots, I didn't feel comfortable having them sitting on the uh, Board of Registrars for it. So because of that, uh, they will be recusing themselves. In a typical situation of a recount, they probably wouldn't have to. But in the future, I think we should look into not having poll workers on yeah. the Board of Registrars. So that was the conflict? They were a poll worker and they're on the Board yes. of Registrars? Yes, and they were directly involved with the absentee ballots. Okay. It's, I'm not trying to slight the person. I'm glad the person's volunteering for whatever they're volunteering for, but had they known that this was a possibility, they might have taken care of this in the, in the past and we wouldn't have to be here right now. Yes. Mr. Catino, I have no questions. All set. This is right. It, uh, yeah, my, the numbers aren't adding up here for me. Um, so we've got Carol Walsh is a Democrat and Chris Dietz is a Democrat. We have the town clerk said to be unenrolled. Carol Walsh is unenrolled as well. She's unenrolled as well. Okay, town clerk is unenrolled. The person recusing themselves was unenrolled, so they're off. The individual who is ill, I believe, is a Republican. So I'm only I'm getting three people right now: a Democrat, two unenrolled, and we need so an even number. So, so you want to have four. In other every, words, we want to have Republican. four. Four is ideal, but three is necessary. And, and it looks like from the current membership, there was not six members; there were only five. Walsh, Dietz, Clerk, the recused person, and Brousseau, that's five. So there never were six, unless somebody's missing. It's a four-member board. Oh, okay, and the town clerk doesn't. It's, the town clerk is one of those four members. It's Bruce, it's, so it's myself, Brousseau, Dietz, and Walsh. Okay, all right, so we're gonna look for Walsh, Dietz town clerk and one other Republican okay the Republican is uh, Brousseau right so that's the, we need to replace that yeah. spot with the Republican for at least temporary situation mm -hmm. okay. anything else Sorry about that. Mr. Sestari. I don't have any questions, just a comment. Um, we, I know a couple of years ago, we went through um, an issue with the elections uh, on the library trustees. At that time, one of the big questions was uh, who had the authority to oversee the process after the election that we had to go through. Because uh, I think at that particular time, I'm forgetting the details, but the town clerk uh, was unable to oversee the election, so the assistant town clerk actually had to come in and be a part of that process. Um, I did check with uh, the town manager who has checked with town council and town council assures us that despite the fact that uh, our current town clerk was not involved in the oversight of the election process that it is legal and also appropriate for him to oversee this process. So uh, just as an explanation to the public and the board uh, that this is this is all good and okay. okay. So, town council, Mrs. Lazarus, has town council weighed in on this? And town council understands we're here tonight, and this is what we're doing. I believe so. 
and is approving this, this process. Okay. And so I'm just a little confused about the town clerk position, and I don't want you to take this personally. You just stepped into the job. So remove your personality from this for a minute. Um, so the town clerk is an elected official in the community. He sits on the board of registrars. It's supposed to be balanced between Republicans and Democrats, or unenrolled Republicans and Democrats, right? Because all three are active or, or, or entitled. Um, but the town clerk, but the town clerk also oversees the elections themselves. Something just sounds a little odd to me there. I, I agree. And, and, and this town clerk, forget his name for a moment, the personality, you know, again, he's walked into it. But the Democratic Town Committee advanced the candidate for town clerk this year, clearly. So there just seems to be this sort of confusion, or the, the lines are sort of not very clear here in my mind. Do you know what I'm saying? Do. I do. I do. Um, and at first, I, I thought Mr. Deegan uh, had, had mentioned that... Um, he would be counted as one of the one of the I guess the way I took it, and I'm not trying to quote you. <laughs> um, the way I took it was that he would be counted as one of the party members, almost on the Democrat side, to balance that out. But then he did clarify that he's, he's unenrolled, unenrolled. right? Um, so he'd be part of the unenrolled count. Uh, but I understand what you're saying. Um, I guess I guess even even looking at it at a level where we're saying that we have a person who was involved in the count of the absentee ballots and that's disqualifying them from uh or making it i guess more or less inappropriate for them to be involved the in this right. right if we have a town clerk which in this case we don't but a town clerk that was overseeing the entire process and then they're involved in the resolution of that whole thing they're still the same the same kind of Having taste been on the ballot yeah. Right. Yeah. So we don't have too many recounts in town, fortunately, and uh, the board of registrars of uh, voters, by all accounts, does an excellent job for the community. So we don't we aren't faced with this too often. But it is something that I'd, like, I'd be interested in getting a little bit more clarification from town council on to make sure that the way we do this, uh, without sort of the rush that we had to go through here in the last 72 hours. Uh, is appropriate for the long term. So if we could charge our council with that, does that make sense to just check in with him on this? And to your point, Mr. Chairman, looking back at that library trustees vote years ago, and there were other issues about the way the number two and the number three vote getters were stated, and it was difficult to determine who had truly won because of language issues. There was more to it. But I do recall that the reason that the assistant town clerk had to basically certify the election was because the current town clerk was on the ballot right, so they right. could not oversee an election result and so it does seem to be a bit of a conflict if now again there is some kind of a a um, you know re-examination of the election result and one of the individuals overseeing that was again on the ballot it I know it's putting Mr. Deegan in an awkward position but just as a town looking at problems in the past I, there are a number of conflicts here that just don't seem yeah, to be right. seems the, the, the lines here just don't seem to be very clear or very clean, and we should look into it. That said, with town council's approval and oversight of this process this evening, I think we should proceed. So is everybody okay with us proceeding? Okay. Any other comments? Mr. Deegan, you okay with us proceeding? Uh, yeah, if I could just make a quick comment. Sure. Um, just to answer some of your concerns, uh, the, uh, the town council actually, I was speaking with them about the issue of the poll worker that would be serving as a registrar. Um, there's actually no legal issue that comes into play there. Okay. Um, I did it purely for a making both sides comfortable situation. Um, and I hope that as an unenrolled candidate, as someone who is situated to be, uh, uh, someone who's an in-between for the town that you would look at my view as impartial so that I can do my job properly for you. 
I have no question that that's absolutely where your focus is. I think the community recognizes, though, that your candidacy was was advanced by the Democratic Town Committee over the last two or three months during the election cycle. Um, so just we just have to address everything because we get phone calls and emails about lots of stuff, and I can see a, com a few coming on this one too. So that's why I bring it up and just want to get it on the table. Um, so with that, you mentioned that you had a candidate that you want to recommend for the Republican seat. Yes, I do. And who would that be, please? I would like to recommend Eric Sonnet for the seat on the Board of Registrars. He is a Republican, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> Does he have any background in politics? <laughs> <laughs> is he familiar with how town hall works? <laughs> um, okay, do you have any other recommendations? No, that is the only recommendation that I have. Did anyone step, did others step forward to ask to be a... I spoke to others, but they did not have the ability to meet the time constraints required for the recount. Okay, so did we have to post this opening? No, I don't believe it has to be posted. Not for the temporary appointments. You do for any of the regular appointments. So when we come up to regular appointments for the Board of Registrars, we will need to do a posting for it. Okay. When is that? So we'll do reappointments for all positions, um, typically the second meeting in June as we get ready to start July 1, new fiscal year. So this is a temporary appointment. When does the appointment end? Is it after this process? I would suggest at the conclusion of this recount process. Okay. We could put that in the motion. And, um, no, no. Is there any other authority of the Board of Registrars that, uh, well, I guess what other authority does the Board of Registrars have? What other duties do they have? Is there something else that all of a sudden can crop up between now and then? Or can we limit, can we limit his authority or uh, capability to only be involved in this process? If we had a motion on the table that um, authorized or, or put forward a candidate to serve in a temporary position for the recount specific to the Board of Health vote from the May 2016 town election and to serve in no other capacity beyond that, that would work, right? I believe so, yes, that would work. Um, I would even recommend just saying that they have uh, their end date as after the meeting has ended uh, for the recount even. So you could say the next day even that their appointment ends because we'll still have all the members of the Board of Registrars. Okay. Once that recount is done, that's it, right? That's it. So we. I would hate to make the motion to say, as soon as the recount's done, that person's gone, and, and then say, yeah. Well, just remember, the hanging chads went on for three yeah. months. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I don't think we have I, hanging chads. I would probably be more comfortable to say that, that his involvement would terminate at the end of this process, upon, at the completion of the process. The recount process. Okay. Okay. Um, be limited to only the recount. So we have a recommended candidate for the Republican seat, a uh, temporary Republican seat on the Board of Registrars, Registrars of Voters. And uh, we can fill in sort of that closure date or end time for the, for the appointment as part of the motion. Does anybody have any concerns about where we're headed? I mean, is the, is the candidate and the process reasonable to everybody on the board? Oh, yeah. Okay. So the chair will entertain a motion to appoint Eric Sonnet as a temporary member of the Board of Registrars of Voters for the purpose of overseeing the recount of the Board of Health election uh, process. So moved. Second. Did I get it all in there? But I didn't put an end on that. But it, it's only related to that recount process. So. so the recount, it's related to the recount process. So does that meet your, so your, moved. your good? Okay, so you moved it, and there's a second. Can we have a contingent on him passing a counting test? <laughs> make sure you get that, Robert. <laughs> and, and, and make sure you get the right person's name. <laughs> We're kidding. We, we love them. Okay. A little fun's good. Um, all right. Any further discussion? 
All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, it's unanimous and so carries. So, Mr. Sonnet will be your temporary member to the Board of Registrars of whatever it's called, Board of Registrars of Voters. It's hard to say. Um, okay. Uh, anything else the board wants to discuss specific to this issue? There's just one other thing I want to touch on real quick before we go. Mrs. Ray. Um, one thing, it looks like this is a very small board, and when we have one of these problems, all of a sudden we've got an issue at hand. Would it be wise to look at the next reappointment cycle to enlarging this board with a few extra members so that should this happen again, the board is not handicapped? I mean, why can't there be, you know, six members? Bump it up a little. It doesn't look like it's a, it's a uh, board that has a lot of work that has to be done during the year. We may or may not be able to do that. Mass general law might dictate what the number has it to does. be. It does dictate the town clerk and three additional members. Okay, so okay. We're, we're locked in. So we're locked in based okay. on that. Nine, nine, okay, nine. thank you, Elaine. Uh, okay, just one other quick topic, and it's not on the agenda, but it doesn't have to be on the agenda because we're not going to vote or discuss it, really. Mr. Catino, can you just fill us in on what's going on at HCAM this evening at 730 that just sort of popped up this afternoon in our email? Yeah, it um, uh, apparently there's a uh, discussion on the an open forum on the uh, trash and recycling that we would we started to discuss uh, several months ago, and then we discussed for a few minutes at the uh, at our first board meeting with the uh, with the new members. Um, the um, town manager uh, set up a uh, an open forum at HCAM so that uh, they could get input from the townspeople as to some of their thoughts as, as to what, uh, which way the um, Board of Selectmen should look. So typically, when we have an issue that's before us and the professional team is also working that issue, they can reach out to the community with or without us and have these discussions. You see them on HCAM all the time doing interviews with different individuals asking questions about different issues in town. That's what this is tonight. So it's not a Board of Selectmen function. It's not a Board of Selectmen sponsored function. Uh, anybody can attend, obviously, because it's a public format. But that's what came up uh, as, you know, what's going on tonight. So it's, it's the trash question. It's the, tr it's the trash issue. They're going to talk trash over there. Um, but I just want to make sure everybody was clear as to kind of what was going on. And we don't necessarily weigh in on everything that the professional staff does. And when they get their input from the community, then some, at some point, you know, in the next meeting or two or three, Mr. Kamala will sit there and explain what they learned at that meeting. Mrs. Rep. Well, I mean, at our last meeting, in addition to the late hour, we said we needed to put this off because we need to get public input. Right. This is something that people care very much about, and I'm all for that. And if the HCAM vehicle is a good public vehicle, then that's great. But the purpose was to get the word out and get public engagement. I heard about this trash forum through the grapevine yesterday from someone at the Memorial Day thing. I went and I looked on the town website, there was nothing. I went and looked at my town email, there was nothing. I went and looked at the HCAM website and didn't see anything. And, and so, um, you know, in terms of it getting out to people to participate in, I don't think that's uh, that accomplishes the purpose. If it's a deep, dark secret, it's not even up on the town website. So, so this is the staff doing their thing. Right. If the staff didn't advertise it very well, then shame on the staff. I'm sure they'll figure out how to do that better going forward. This is not the only public input, and it's not the only time that the public will be given an opportunity to address the Board of Selectmen about trash. This is just the staff's piece of the... So sometimes we have to separate ourselves, right? So the staff does their thing. They get paid a lot of money in town to make things work. They do a great job, okay? But we let them do their thing, and every now and then we're not involved. So I, I knew there was going to be some questions about it. That's why I wanted to bring it up. But there will be additional public input to this board directly uh, at the appropriate time. We're not there yet. Okay. Okay? Anything else on that? Not necessarily on that, but... In, in light of why we're here right now, could we ask the town clerk to kind of do some legwork and any of the other boards that, or, or committees or whatever that may come up to have this type of snafu on it, could we proactively try to take care of it so we don't have emergency meetings? Uh, like this is obviously something that if there's, 
if there's a, a potential conflict, that should be identified. And if it's if it if it meant that two months ago the other board could have taken care of it and I could have not been here, that would have been fine by me. So, so this issue tonight is a unique issue, and in my nine years, eight years now sitting on the board, never seen anything pop up like this. Uh, the I've seen it happen at fifty percent of my meetings. The question specific <laughs> to the question specific to emergency meetings or the comment specific to emergency meetings is we do have them. And there's stuff that happens. Stuff happens. Um, it's maybe once a quarter, if that, that we'd have it. Maybe twice, two, three times a year. But they will come up from time to time. And uh, we'll try and give you as much notice as possible. We've had meetings sometimes in the past. In my second year on the board, we had some meetings the same day. Oh, yeah. They were true emergency meetings. So if you can't make it, you can't make it. It's okay. Yeah, no, I understand. But we'll try to limit them. But they do come up from time to time. I'm just thinking proactively if uh, Mr. I can't think of another committee that we'd have to do something like this for to a point for a, a recount. I mean, usually it's more specific, issue specific sure. stuff and okay. not a process specific question. This is a process question. Okay. 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 So, with that, the board will entertain a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>